Welcome to Archaeotech Assimilation, where we discover and investigate the technology of the Imperium and the tools of chaos. Hello everyone and welcome back to this episode of Iron and Ceramite present Archaeotech Assimilation. Uh, we are continuing with our journey through the Angels of Death series. Uh, my name is John and joining me today is Glenn. How are you doing, mate? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. good to see you again, as always. Yes, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, right, so we're on to episode seven, The Honour of Angels. Um, if you haven't already, please go and check out the previous six episodes on our channel and all the other bits and pieces we've got going on. Um, and we also really will, would like to know if you're enjoying the series as much as I think we all are. Um, so give us a comment in the uh, in the comments below or come talk to us on Instagram and Facebook and all those other places. Um, so what did you think of this one? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, like I said to you before, though, I had to watch a few episodes back to back because I was a little bit behind. So it was it was nice getting like what well, probably about an hour's worth to sit and watch. It was sort of like, oh yeah, this is this is good. So it's all blurred into one a little bit. But yeah, I thought it was a very enjoyable episode. Yeah, because yeah, we obviously you haven't um, been on the last couple. So how how are you finding like the second half of the series then? Um I like to see where it's all going. I like the addition of a few new characters and stuff. And you're seeing a little bit more from the, the Gene Steeler cult side. And my personal favourites, the Admech, have appeared. So, yeah, it's it's enjoyable. I just... It's just that every bloody week you have to wait for the next one. But, <laughs> you know, we'll get used to that eventually. Yeah. I know it's, it's hard, isn't it? It's like, oh... They, and they're really good. I think the one thing the show has done really well is ended on cliffhangers. Yeah. They've worked it out really well. Yeah. No, sure. it's, it, it's done really well to make you want to come back. It's like old school TV. It's like you're getting one episode, you're going to want to tune in the following week to watch the next episode. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. So uh, without that, let, let's get into it and we can talk about it in a bit more detail as we go. So uh, as always, we go through the beats of the story. And then we'll talk about what we like and don't like and all that good stuff. And so take this as your spoiler warning as we jump into episode seven, The Honour of Angels. Uh, so to open with this episode, we see a very brief shot of Kazarian trying to hold it together um, as the battle is clearly going on behind him and he's struggling um, with what's going on inside of him. Um, after the credits, uh, we're still in the battle and... Um, and Chaos comes over to check on him and get him back into the fight. Uh, and like you can just see sort of Kazarian half-heartedly kills this enemy soldier that's running towards him. Um, and uh, you can just see he's really, really finding it hard. And, and Chaos sort of reassures him and says that the curse is a burden on all of us. Don't worry, salvation didn't die with Raphael. Um, and as long as he lives, he won't let the madness take him. So... Although, like the first half of the series, they were definitely sort of come, clashing their heads, like they're bonded in during this battle already. Um, and yeah, so he's having he's having a hard time. And oh yeah, I've got Seglin. Raphael was pretty much dead. You, were, that's sad. That's guys. Yeah, you know, I, I think he had died at right at the end of the last time I was watching it. So yeah. the three episodes that I have subsequently watched has sort of been like. Oh damn, he is actually he's dead. Yeah. You know, I thought, yeah, they'll lose some scrubs. They might lose an, a big character at some like towards the end of the series. But it's like, man, he's the chaplain. He's cool. And then yeah, he he did. Yeah. Uh that sucks. Uh, I'm still not over it, clearly. Um, oh, that was that was weeks ago as well. Yeah. Uh, so, meanwhile, our uh, Admech Magos is um, working on uh, Captain Orfeo and um, things are taking a bit of a, a sinister turn, I think, very slowly. Um, so she tells him that she's implanted some neuron blockers so he can't move anything below his neck and he's demanding to be released. And, and she says that she saved him. You're in a coma. Thanks to me, uh, you've survived, but you are still flawed, um, which he doesn't take kindly to. Uh, and we get some good Space Marine um, standard one-liners out of him saying that he is uh, 
the emperor's will made flesh taken from dust to shed their weakness to become angels and she says despite that you're still a failure um and your pride is what lets you down uh, and he and again he, he really doesn't like that um and then we see some very grainy footage of the rest of the blood angels with her servitors and she's saying i'm getting to where they need to go uh, and says that she observed them and she's used what she learned by watching to get them to where she wants them uh, and orfeo ever increasing like he can't really do anything but he's very angry um and he, he doesn't like the fact that she's using his men as tools for her purpose although she says her purpose is purer than his uh, she serves knowledge above all else um and he yet has a vital function to perform uh, and he obviously says like my only purpose is to serve the emperor uh, which she sort of dismisses uh, and reveals a crate and says that their purpose is exactly the same um so we, we was having a discussion i think me and dave before about there's something not quite right about her um uh, i think um, that, that's coming forwards i i like her though she's a bit mental yeah but it's i think it's been done really really well because a lot of the background of the adeptus mechanicus is yes they are imperium but they are kind of detached as well from the the needs and the purpose of a lot of the imperial side of stuff they have their own agenda and it may may conflict a little bit. And I think this has been done really, really well with her. She might be a little bit mental. I think I I think she's probably just gone a bit crazy due to the length of time they've been there because they haven't specifically said how long she's been there alone. Yeah. And I think she may have just gone a bit cuckoo. But equally, she's sticking to the Mechanicum line. Yeah. really, really well. And it's it's at odds with the way the Blood Angels view things. But yeah, it's, it's gone really well for me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll touch on her again very shortly and we'll expand on that. So, uh, we'll, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so elsewhere, um, we've got our bald gene stealer fellow um, going back to the female counterpart, which I think we'll find out here that a bit more of the dyma- d- dynamic. She's definitely in charge. Um, and he goes and says that the false angels are still alive uh, and she says that his trust in their flawed kin was misplaced and what he wants is more true angels to help him finish them off but she refuses to waste their purity due to his pride Um, and he tells her that the blood angels are heading um, to the the base of the tower um, thanks to the machine witch but she doesn't care because the storms are clearing and the many armed god um, will open his arms to embrace them soon. Um, he sulks off, um, <clears throat> and then she addresses a coven full of gene stealers uh, and says that they have been completing their father's work even as he sleeps. And as it zooms out, you see that huge tyranid um, sort of uh, hibernating on the plinth behind her. Um, she tells them that the final step to ascension is ready to take. They will prove their pureness and ascend to the stars. Uh, and then as it floats up, we see this sort of cage um, hanging above them with some psychers chained up uh, who start screaming and emitting light from their mouths and eyes. Uh, and then we get a bit of a view of uh, it, of the uh, the camera basically pans up, up the tower to the Blood Angel ship above where we see um, the Gene Steelers properly invading the ship and doing a bit of a, um, Alien 2 on the guys and jumping all over the soldiers. Well, I, I really, I'm really liking these gene stealers. Like the more we get to see of them, they're uh, yeah. they're nuts. Yeah, no, they. It's another thing they're doing really, really well. Just how deadly they can be. Yeah, and they've got a tyranid sat there. I'm assuming that's a full-on tyranid. That uh, looks to be a full-on brood lord. Brood There's lord. usually a, a brood lord um, floating around in gene stealer cults, and I'm pretty sure that's a brood lord from yeah. the from the looks of it. Which is basically just a huge ass gene sealer. Yeah, uh, that's going to wake up soon, surely. And are we going to see some brood brood lord on dreadnought action? Maybe. No, I think the dreadnought is going to clear the ship. Yeah, that's that's where it's going to be because, like, 
I think it was in the previous episode, the tech ranger sort of was like, ah, there's another solution. And he just sort of casually strolled off. He's, he's a cracking character. I love him. There's not enough of him. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that he's just gone off to get the dreadnought to to rescue the ship. Um, it's going to be... Uh, uh, Kazarian. Yeah. Nah, it's going to be Kazarian, goes mental, and has it out with the Broodlord. That's yeah. that's my new prediction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. We'll see. Maybe, oh, yeah. Well, we'll see. Anyway, back to the Blood Angels. So, um, Orpheus is still laying on the table uh, and he's sort of straining. And he manages to move his hand and wiggle his fingers, um, which impresses the um, Admech who, who wasn't expecting him to be able to do it. Uh, he can't do much more. Um, and she says that he's still of use and she has far something far more valuable um, than he realises, which turns out to be an STC. Uh, it's the reason that she came to the planet and why she's remained underground um, as everything above fell to ruin. And he asks her what, what it contains. And she doesn't know. All she can say is it contains secrets, great and terrible secrets. But clearly she hasn't been able to, well, as far as we know, she hasn't been able to access it to find out what's actually in there. Um, so the reason she wants the Blood Angels is... Um, she wants to get it back to the hands of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, she's been stranded for ages, which is really inconvenient because obviously, as we know, her um, sort of thing is the quest for knowledge and having this box um, with obviously lost technology in it and not being able to access it is probably what's driving her a bit mad um, and pushed her over the edge. So she needs to uh, use the Blood Angels to destroy the Xenos, bring the tower down and get her off the planet. Um, and he he sort of is disgusted and says that she's less than human, um, but she says that all living things are the same, and we would all do anything just to survive for an extra moment longer, uh, and he sort of flat out refuses to help, and she says she just needs the angels of death. They won't listen to me, but they will listen to you, uh, and she flicks a switch, and as the machinery t- turns on, Orpheo screams in pain, um, and the rest of the angels follow in the services. And they come to sort of a, a, a dead end sealed archway. Uh, and uh, the Magos starts talking through one of the servitors and says that the Xenos are planning on moving through the tower, taking over their ship in order to escape. Um, we've brought you up to this hoist, which will take you directly to the Xenos inner sanctum. And you'll be able to find the Patriarch and the Brood and take them out. Um, and with that, the doorway opens and Orpheo steps out. And all he says is, our duty brothers and Kaya steps forward and asks him what this place is but Orpheo doesn't answer him he just carries on what he was saying and says what else is there the duty and the honour of the angels and with that the episode ends so what has she done to Orpheo's brain do you think turned it off I don't know I think it's- it's going to be something like she'd done to like the rest of his limbs, some kind of inhibitor, mm. and she's just using it as like a, a broadcasting tool, basically. The same as she's used like the servitors. I'm gonna guess. Yeah. It seems a little bit. This is the only bit for me that I'm kind of like. I don't know how this is going to play out because this this isn't sort of rooted in any kind of lore that I'm aware of. So. Well, I, think I don't know because like obviously. Astartes don't like to be manipulated, which is clearly what's happened. Even though, like, if she just said, I've got an STC, let's kill these Xenos and get us off the planet, they'd probably be up for it. But because she's gone about it in such a way of, obviously, a few of them, well, quite a few of them have been killed and she's been a bit secretive. I think if he had control of his functions, he'd probably just blown her away. And mm. this way, if, 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 if she's put something on his brain, because he's come out like Buzz Lightyear. He can only say catchphrases. Like, yeah. That's, that's all he's done there. He's just said a catchphrase and not really said anything of value to them. So I think, yeah, they'll figure it out. But I think they'll they'll go on a little bit and think, hmm, something's, something's not right. I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. No, I, I want to see what way it's go- what's going to play out. Because yeah. like you said, it, it's very, very good, this show, with its cliffhangers. And you just want to carry on with the story. Yeah. I am just going to have, once the series finishes, I'm going to sit down and just binge through the whole thing, just in, like, yeah. as like a feature length thing. 
Yeah. Well, I, I would say I'm hoping that they would have done because obviously Astartes they put up and they just put it up as one one episode. So I hope they do that to this as well. I think yeah, that would be useful actually if they, yeah, they just bonged it all together. Yeah. Although you'd end up, just, yeah, I mean, it's going to be about two hours by the time it's done, which is, I'm not going to complain about because it's good. Oh, it's going to be more than that now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they're what about by 18 minutes an episode and then a half hour one. Well, yeah. best part of a half hour one. So, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it'd be like sitting down and watch Lord of the Rings. It'd be fine. Yeah, brilliant. Maybe we'll watch Lord of the Rings afterwards too. <laughs> <laughs> just not move. Just not, I'm just not going to move anymore. No. Yeah. No, I, I need to get up and move. That's, I've had too much of that. <laughs> but I think, um, I think Orpheo is not getting out of this alive. And I don't think that Magos is getting out of this in one piece either. I think someone's going to kill her. Yeah, no. I think both of them are probably... I don't know. The captain might get out. I, I, I don't know. It depends on how the Magos goes. He no. might get freed. I don't know. It's been... I know you're saying that Kazarian's going to go against Brutal. I think Orpheo will. Or maybe he'll get killed. Maybe he will first and get killed, and then Kazarian will. Maybe. Kazarian's going to be the one to kill the Brood Lord. Yeah. He might, he probably will die in the end. Yeah. But I think he will he will kill the Brood Lord right. in his black rage. Well, I, one bit that I really liked when Orpheo came out the door and you had the guy, the beaky helmet guy. And he was like looking up and down. And although there's like no feature there, the way that he done his eyes, it looked like yeah. it was like visible confusion. The way he was looking up and down, they have they have humanized a lot of the marine side of stuff. Even when you can't see a face, it's been yeah. very well done. And even the nice little bit of humor about like the uh, one of the guys has lost an arm, yeah. and the guy with the heavy boulder is like, "Do you need me to help you reload?" <laughs> yeah, and then he can't reload. Yeah. Uh, I like that. But so, yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I thought this was a good episode. Um I've got it. I was hoping to see some dread, but they're they're obviously teasing us. They are, they are, because they know everybody wants to see the dreadnought, because it will come out and it will smash the shit out of everything. <laughs> and everybody's been waiting for it since it's been in the bloody credits. Yeah. From the very start, is one of the first things you see in the credits is the yeah. Ignis, I think, isn't it called? Yeah, and it's like um, when they, when we meet all the characters, the two of them uh, and KS and um, the Tech Marine are literally standing next to it. Yeah, it's like, oh, come on, come on, we know it's there. Yeah. Cool. Um, right. So, anything else for this episode, or it stood out for you, or are we are we gonna uh, are we done? No, I think we're done. I thought it was a pretty good episode. And again, just look forward to the next one. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So, you know what we think about it. Like I said, we want to know what you guys think about it. So do leave us a comment down below or you can jump onto Instagram and message either one of us. Um, we're on Facebook and Twitter and all that. Um, if you aren't already, please do um, subscribe to the channel. Um, and then if you like a podcast, we've got a hobby podcast. Um, so, you can either watch along with us or you can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts we're on twitch come follow us on there if you do like what we're doing and want to support the channel check us out on patreon and we've also got an element games link so check the um comments or check the description of the video and click on our link go to element games you can get your hobby equipment and, and books and stuff a bit of a discount and use our link and obviously element games will give us a bit of a, a thank you and no extra cost to you they give us a bit of a kickback um, and we are going to put any money that you guys do contribute to us um, back into the channel and increase our equipment and stuff. And then, like I always say, combat cards, it's Glenn and Shane. You need to get on there and dethrone them because um, they're, they're untouchable at the minute, I think. I don't think anybody in the clan's too close I, to you. I know I'm not. Uh, to be honest, I have not really played in a couple of weeks. So oh, don't I think it's, it, it's, it's mostly Shane. The yeah. last time I was on, he was a good couple of thousand points ahead of me. Oh, really? And I've, yeah, and that was a while ago. So, yeah, I think it's... Go and, go and kick Shane's ass. Yeah, he'll be love it. He'll, he'll love that when he sees this. Mm. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, thank you for joining us on this video, uh, and we'll see you on the next one.
Oui. As always, we would like to thank you for listening to our Iron and Ceramite podcast. If you liked us, then you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and any other good podcast services. Just remember, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war.